so Brendan Julian first four from Ireland oh, nearly his last everybody's fired up what a good over because Mark Ireland he's looked plain so far in this match and yet suddenly he sprung to life had an LBW appeal turned down he got a wicket and nearly a second one That's a good performance from the Australians to get up to 262 for five, but England fought back well. Mark War will be very disappointed getting out for 70 after playing such a good hand, and David Boone not out 88. Alan Border hasn't batted yet. He has hay fever problems, eye problems, and the pollen count is very high in the area. And the bowling figures for England, McCaig, a good debut for him, two for 82, a wicket each for Islet, Such, and Caddick. And the state of the game after two days, England 321, Australia 262 for five. It you know, I mean, uh, he really is. He's a smashing fella. Some of the highlights of the third day's play of this Cornhill Test match between England and Australia at Trent Bridge. We've had two wonderful days so far, some very competitive cricket. England did well on the first day, then Australia fought back. England made 321, and it's been a thoroughly good performance from the two sides. One of the men holding Australia together, as he has done so often in recent years, was David Boone. He's had a terrific series so far. Wonderful player, played lovely innings yesterday. Tough as Tasmanian Teak. And against him, well, the chap who's been brought up to play his cricket in Australia, but did very well in his debut test match for England yesterday, Martin McCaig. I thought he showed a lot of ability and he showed a bit of fire in the belly as well. Well, at the start of play, those two men will be in competition, Boone and Martin McCaig. That's the way it is. England 321 all out. Australia 262 for five. Boone is unbeaten on 88. Mark Waugh played very well yesterday and Boone has with him today Brendan Julian and the Australians are 59 runs behind. We join play now in the first over of the day. It's the fifth ball. Mark Islet, the left hander, is the bowler. Brendan Julian has taken strike and no runs have been added to the overnight score. Well, well done. That moved a long way off the pitch, went away off the seam, and Julian just managed to get the outside edge to it. Good catch by Alex Stewart. He had to go across, and I suspect he had to go a bit forward as well. So the breakthrough has come for England. Yes, I like getting some movement. He did this late on yesterday. Fishing round about leg stump. He's got the natural angle of the left arm of the wicket ball. It did go off the seam as well. And he did this later on yesterday. He moved nothing all through the day, and then last two or three hours last night, he decided to move the ball. That's a good breakthrough for... England in the first day of the morning. Alan Border does come out now. So he will join David Boone. Little edge, perhaps. certainly getting the ball to go back into the right hand and a definite edge there I would say otherwise there would have been a big shout claiming it with all sorts of uh, ricochets and the Yorker and uh, just an excited appeal more than anything else. No real disappointment when it was turned down by umpire Mayer. Didn't really get hold of it. Good job he didn't. That was not a convincing stroke. Arlott has bowled quite sharply this morning. Alan Border, I don't think he's done anything this morning that's been convincing for his own team. He had to fetch that from right outside off stump. He was lucky that it fell short of fine leg. I felt that the spell of bowling by England this morning has been the best of the series from both ends. Last ball can't cut that off. That was fortunate. I just wonder with Boone there, because uh, Eilert, he has got movement and a little bit of lift if he couldn't have a gully there or a third slip. 
Easy to talk after the four's gone, but uh, there has been something there for him this morning. He's done exactly what they want of him, uh, Mark Ireland. He's not tried a ball too quick, but he's ball lively, and he's just moved the ball around a bit. That'll be it. That'll be the 100. 16th for David Boone for Australia. His fifth against England, second in successive test matches. It's come off 170 balls, there have been 17 fours there. Another four. Well, that was a quality shot by Alan Border. Foot right to the pitch of the ball. He waited for it, timed it beautifully. was talking about it's certainly the breakthrough England desperately wanted and now well right back in the game with Boone gone for 101 and a third wicket for McCaig well a super innings by David Boone but a beautiful piece of bowling by Martin McCaig give full credit to the bowler slightly slower ball it didn't come out of his hand too quick he gets there early and away from his body and then the inside edge you might see a slice of luck onto the stump but he deceived David Boone, he's got a hundred, so it was clever bowling, quality bowling. Merv Hughes didn't come into three cheers from the crowd by any means. Now people think of him as big bad Merv, but uh, he's a terrific competitor. Shot, a little short arm jab, but he's a dangerous merchant, is Mervyn Hughes. My word, that was easy. Hardly a follow through, just uh, the timing, the angling on the bat, the opening out of the bat. Beautifully played. They look for a second. As the Islet has to run about 50 or 60 yards up from fine leg. Two more for Merv Hughes. That's quite a strong appeal. Well justified as uh, Merv Hughes just did a little perambulation across the crease. In fact, that's well worth a shout. It hit on the inside of the pad. Merv Hughes must have just been a touch outside off stump when it hit him. But not much. That's a real clutch. It's got a terrific wipe. <laughs> oh, he's bowled him. He's bowled him. I think Gratis Smith Hughes, who uh, played an optimistic stroke, I think it's fair to say. But this is certainly now a contest, I think, beyond England's dreams that they could, they could be so much in the match on this third day. Good bowling there from Islet. He's done extremely well this morning and he's shown that he's got uh, some test match qualities. A little bit of swing there that just beat uh, Merv Hughes's slog and he's out for 17. Australia now 8 for 311. Shane Warne is the new batsman.
good square drive. Now that one went away from the left hander. It just gave him a little bit of room. The border pounced on it. Now, beautiful delivery, and uh, certainly Carrick making the ball do more than he's done at any time in this series now. And uh, that's a good ball, and that's how I'd like to see him bowling. The outfield has quickened up dramatically from the first day. That was just a gentle little nudge from Alan Border. And at one point it looked as though Peter Such might drag it in. And then it fairly raced away from him. Two leg buys added to take the Australian total up to 324 for eight at lunch. And a good performance there from David Boone. A century for him, successive centuries in the tests here. Border 28 not out, handicapped through illness. And Hughes 17, Shane Warne is with him there. And the bowling figures for England, a good performance from McCaig again, 3 for 101. And Islet, I thought was the star of the morning, came back very well, 3 for 102. And such a wicket and one for Caddick as well. We join play after lunch in the third over. The four runs have been added and Caddick is bowling to Warne. Andrew Caddick, he's got this lovely line on Shane Warne, just outside off stump. Making life too difficult for him. In fact, the bowling is too good for the tail ender. Impossible that Caddick can still probe around that off stump and not get the outside edge. Well, he needs to bowl these balls at top-class batsmen, but they're too good for a tail ender. The line, the lens, just outside of stump, just moving away to the slips, holding its own a bit off the seam. Another four. How many times has worn? played on the offside and missed and the first time he gets any sort of bat on it it goes for four. Mark Island then to have his first opportunity to bowl at Shane Warne since lunch. That was a good shot. Warne's never had to do much batting for Australia but he is quite capable. A good style when he was uh, with the under-19s in Australia. He made some runs for them as well as took wickets. And Border has been given a bit of width there by McCaig. And he has smashed that away through extra cover. He's made many since lunch, but uh, he waited on that. Gave it plenty. If there's no holding back there, I think like most left-handers, they uh, like a little bit of room outside that off stump. Give them everything. There's a good shot from Border. Got it away over mid-on. And it runs down to the rope. So mm -hmm. that will be more incentive for Graham Good to take the second new ball. Probably with McCaig in his next over from Radcliffe Road End. Yes, I couldn't believe Alan Bird would play too long against the off-spinner. I can get him back over the top. And that's out. <clears throat> Bird is going for a hit over the top again. Sliding side edge. And a straight forward catch to Smith at mid-wicket. Well, that's the one England needed. The lead at the moment is only 35. And that is manageable so far as Graham Gooch is concerned. And a border out for 38. 129 balls. It'll be one of the slowest innings he's played. But he was unwell yesterday and is not fully fit today. Playing the same stroke, where he picked such up earlier in the over. And that's quite a good catch. It'll have taken a slip a moment or so to pick it up in the background of the crowd at the Radcliffe Road end. And Border is gone. 
356 for nine now. Border coach Smith Falls Hutch for 38. McCaig is bowling to Shane Warne. It was a catchable height, but wide of Alex Stewart. We almost got there. It would have been a brilliant catch if we got to that. For Tim May, the number 11, has to face the second new ball. A big appeal. That would depend on whether the ball was swinging. Again, a long way across. Very close, but the umpire probably decided didn't quite hold it up enough from the leg side. And that's out. The second new ball does the trick. Tim May is out. And Australia are bowled out for 373. got inside there was any edge or did the leg get outside the off stump well, the umpire no doubt that's a good performance from Shane Warne not out 35 in that total of 373 and uh, the bowling figures for England McCaig and Eilert Eilert still starred after lunch and such two for 51 with Caddick one for 81 and the position of the game at the end of the two innings a lead for Australia by 52 runs we join play now in the third over. Hughes is the bowler and batting for England is Lapple. Well, that was a no such shot. It's the sort of ball which is outside of stump. You go feeling at it. Oh, and nerves arrived. Well, I was just about to say, it's a good time to be bowling. The temperature's dropped. It's got cloudy, overcast, a little murky for batting. And he bowls a beauty here to Mike Latherton. Pitched and left him. Wonderful shot. That's one of his stents. You see, you've got much more time when, when they allow you to play back. Especially when Brendan Julian's not particularly quick. You've timed, this one was a little shorter than normal and it just gets the full treatment. It's cracked away, good shot. Not a good shot. There's every chance had he laid any bat on that that he wouldn't have deflected it wide of, of wicketkeeper Ian Healy. Too wide really to play this sort of shot to. He's going round with it. And well, that was so close. Oh, there again. Big shout. Oh, he's given him. Umpire Mao has given him. Mike Latherton stood there. And umpire Palmer has asked for a replay but he's given him out he cannot ask for a replay those are the line decisions only and that was the sort of shot which we saw Mike Lafton try earlier on in the over and we did point out that if he got anything on it it was quite likely to go to the wicket keeper now what did he get on it glove and what was Mike Lafton's query in staying there did he think it had carried well I think he got the bat on it as he followed it round just to find bat and I think he was wondering whether it actually carried to the keeper. He goes round it on the back, it's quite clear there, he hit it to me, and he's just querying whether the wicketkeeper caught it on the full and not the half volley. It's a sad way to be out. One more run added to take the score up to 12 for one wicket at T. Atherton out for nine, Laffel is three, and Robin Smith yet to get off the mark. We pick up play now in the first over after tea. 
No runs have been added. Julian is the bowler and Robin Smith is taking strike. Shot, an excellent Peter Fielding by Slater there. And so Fielding wins matches and things like that, and brilliant catches that we saw. Julian take a cotton ball in the first innings. That's what the game is all about. Half volley, Smith giving it the full treatment. Magnificent stop. Pull away through mid wicket, straight down into the ground. Yes, when you can pull the ball down through straight mid wicket, that shows you've got plenty of time to play the shot. Oh, a genuine bouncer. Just took him up fractionally. I don't think he did exactly as he wanted to. Got away with it though, but uh, there's nothing more that Merv likes than getting stuck in when he's been hooked for four. He'll come charging back now. That's a better shot. They only get one for it. But he got himself, I think, with a naked eye anyway, nicely inside that. They even have thought it was going to be on its way to him. I was going to say that, Rich. I think he might have thought as a bouncer coming here. I think he was half waiting for this. And yeah, he played that pretty well. Nice timing. Good feeling. Save one run, would have been four. And you can see Robin Smith itching to use his feet to get to the off spinner. He tried it at Lords and got stumped because when it turned and went down the leg side. Let's see Slater just stopping himself in front of the rope. Shot and great fielding by Steve War. England's 50, and it's still gone for four. Just wondered how often you see a ball hit with such power off the front foot behind square on the offside. And again, that's magnificent. And that's also the lead. The crowd are not slow to pick that up. 
What a shot this was. Well, it's perfect for him. It's right in the slot. Anywhere up and wide, he'll hit you all day long, front or back foot, with precision. That's a lovely shot. That's four more. Well, we've said what a risky player he is, and uh, this shot just shows how risky. Yes, yeah, Shane Warne gave him lots of room, and he just cut it behind square. Oh! Don't think there was a nick there. The keeper didn't hold on to it, but it looks as though Lathwell, with no discernible foot movement, was well and truly beaten. Well, it was perfectly bold. The googly pitched outside off stump to come back into him. That's the 50 partnership. It's come up only 72 balls. And the crowd have had some rich batting entertainment in the last couple of days. Australia cracking on about this time yesterday. And look at this for a shot. Well, young Mark Lothwell didn't pick the first googly that he was bowled, but he certainly picked that one. Oh, turned. That must have hit a little bit of the bowler's rough for follow through. See here. Yeah, see the puff of dust. That's definitely a bowler's foot mark. Oh, and another one. That one probably turned even more sharply. Well, it was good cricket here. He really spun this. Well, you better bowl well at Robin Smith when he's in this mood. His confidence is high from runs in the first innings and his 190 for Hampshire against the Australians. And I just get the feeling as I did first innings that underneath he's also a little bit aggrieved that there was discussion about dropping him from the England test side. This is spectacular stuff. Oh, nicely bowled. Well, this is the benefit of pitching into the rough. It turns such a lot, it grips does the ball, it beat the outside edge if you laugh well. Well, it's gift wrap bowling, is this? You cannot bowl short for Robin Smith, even if he's out of form, so he certainly can't do it when he's feeling a very aggressive and in good nick. He'll murder you. Oh, that's close. That is close, no shot played. David Boone at short square legs got head up about that one. <laughs> well, David Boone usually doesn't say anything. Shane Warne's very upset. You see this one pitching in line. Oh, dear. I mean, you could say that might have pitched and turned and missed off stump, but I think most times you get given out for that, not playing the shot at all. That was a beauty, wasn't it? I'm not sure who's getting in the bigger tangle here, the batsman or the keeper. You see here, Robin Smith has much more problems if you bowl at leg stump. He's got his foot on the wrong side of the ball. Yeah. 
Robin Smith's 50. The ball floated with an extra height, and Smith saw it, dashed down the pitch, and, well, when he thumps it, it really stays thumped. Up they go, and Smith is gone. Beautifully bowled. The faintest outside edge, but beautifully pitched. That leg spinner, the stock ball, again dragged. Smith lunging onto the front foot. And Ian Healy took the catch. 100 for two. A quicker leg spinner there from Shane Warne, so that uh, when it spun, it went quickly. It didn't go far, and just got a little touch there. So Shane Warne has uh, once again turned the match in Australia's favour by getting rid of the very dangerous Robin Smith. Oh, he picked it up well enough. That's another reason why Alex Stewart is important to England because he, uh, he does play leg spin bowling quite well. No trouble there at all with the uh, flipper. Oh, well, that must be close. Uh, yes, it's out, and I'm afraid the wiles of Shane Warne were much too much for Mark Latwell. It really bamboozled him into a state of just being able to push out with the front pad, absolutely uncertain about which way the ball might turn. Still, he fought it out well. 33 runs. England's third wicket goes down for 109. That was the top spinner going straight on, and that was the key to it. Not pitching outside leg stump, pitching in line. And uh, it also pitched short enough so that Roy Palmer could see it travelling straight. And because the batsman hadn't played a shot, he was on his way. So, uh, disappointing end for Mark Lathwell. Played well against the quick bowlers, but really struggled against the spinners. And here comes Graham Gooch. And did, uh, wow, did anything depend more upon the England captain? Give England such a strong lead from the opening batting position over the last years. Notably against the West Indies. Really turned the tide against West Indies for England. from Graham Gooch. Put a bit off the mark. Captain and vice captain together at the moment. I know precisely what's wanted. It's a delightful shot. He just watches it, wait for the last moment, and late cuts it. shows exactly what his intentions are to hit with the spin England have the lead at the moment they've lost three wickets if we run it will be difficult for Australia to chase in for a good match I think We're asking for that on the basis that it hit the pad before it hit the bat. It certainly was a very dangerous shot. The ball running on quite quickly. You could see that the ball would probably have missed off still. Well, I have a feeling that Gooch hit his pad with his bat, not the ball hit the pad. Stewart has to go, umpire Barry Mayer 
has given him LBW to Hughes. Ball of very full length, probably the attempt at Yorker. I'm not certain if it uh, got through at Yorker length. Well, the problem for Alex Stewart was he hit across the line. Although it was a very full delivery, he was hitting this towards mid-wicket. Right up there, you see, and the bat's going through. It's closed as the bat, so we actually see the edge of it at one stage. He's hitting it too square. Well, the return of Hughes to the attack did the trick. Now, the interest of the Australians will be which batsman is coming out now. I don't know, is it going to be a night watchman? And it is. Gooch is out in the centre, so he'd have made some plans before he left. Graham Gooch is going to take strike to Merv Hughes. Ten minutes to go. Now, this would be the prize wicket for Australia if uh, Graham Gooch were to be got out. Great shot, great reply. And uh, Gooch now has scored 2,000 test match runs against Australia. Nine others have done it before him. Good shot, Merv Hughes banging it in, trying to unsettle him. Pull it well. Didn't hook it, just pulled it, rolled his wrist. No more runs added after that boundary for Graham Gooch, but more important for England, no wickets went down. 122 for four at the close of play, and Caddick has resisted the Australians once again. A brilliant innings from Robin Smith, and a good knock from Laffwell, although he was all at sea against Shane Warne. The bowling figures show that Warne took two for 30 from 13 overs and six maidens, and Hughes once again was magnificent. 11 overs, five maidens and two for 25 and the state of play after three days England 70 runs ahead well in this game of test cricket match winners are very important and we had a perfect example uh, late this evening Robin Smith who's uh, a match winner for England looked like he was taking the game in uh, England's direction and suddenly Shane Warne one of Australia's match winners got him out and it just changed the course of the game yeah Robin Smith he's a dominating personality and a dominating batsman he had Australia he had the crowd on his side had it all shouting for England again and then suddenly it changed as soon as he got out Australia just strangled the England batsman yes it just sort of stopped the scoring didn't it yeah. uh, and Lathwell didn't really seem to know much about the spinners and once you stop the scoring you're well on the way to uh, getting wickets and the thing is you don't only just have one you've got big bad Murph to come yeah. on and he sneaked a wicket at the end so that is the difference, those two match-winning performers that you have, and we don't have any bowlers like that. So Graham Gooch has really got to get on top of the Australian bowling, and I think he's got to take it to Merv a bit. Well, we have another match-winning batsman besides Smithy, and that is Gooch, and it's got to be Gooch on Monday. He's got to do the stuff. Yes, it'll need to be a real captain's knock from uh, Graham Gooch on Monday when play resumes, and it's a rest day tomorrow. We have an enthralling test match in view on the last two days, Monday and Tuesday been three wonderful days of cricket so far. Coverage will continue on Monday on BBC Two at 10.55. At the moment, it's goodbye.